call the meeting of the Rules, Privileges, and Elections to order. Good morning and welcome to the Committee on Rules, Privileges, and Elections. My name is Karen Koslowitz and I am Chair of the Committee on Rules, Privileges, and Elections. Before we begin, I would like to introduce the members of this Rules Committee present. We have Ma Minority Leader Stephen Matteo, Council Member Adrian Adams, Council Member Margaret Chin, Council Member Robert Cornegy, is that still no? No. Okay. Council Member Vanessa Gibson, Council Member Rory Lansman, Council Member Richie Torres, and Council Member Mark Trigg is not here either. And of course, our wonderful speaker, Corey Johnson. I would also like to acknowledge Rules Committee Council, Elizabeth Guzman. I would also like to acknowledge the staff members from the Council's Investigative investigative Unit, Chuck Davis, Director Investigations, and Andre Johnson Brown. First, we will consider and vote on the appointment of Mr. Capelli of the New York City Planning Commission and on the reappointment of Mr. Alfred C. Cirillo III to the Planning Commission. We will conclude with a vote on a resolution to ratify council action as a body in the filing of Council versus Carter, filed April 17, 2018. Again, a case against the New York City Law Department Corporation Council filed under the authority invested in the speaker. I would like to now call on Speaker Johnson to say a statement. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair Kozlowitz. I want to welcome our two fantastic candidates, uh, Mr. Alan Capelli, Who's, uh, who currently serves on the New York City Civil Service Commission and now has been nominated to serve on the New York City Planning Commission, and Mr. Alfred C. Cerullo III, Fred Cerullo, as I call him, who has been nominated for reappointment to the City Planning Commission. I wholeheartedly support these appointments. Both men have served New York City with honor and dedication and distinction and are well qualified to serve on the Planning Commission. I urge my colleagues to support these outstanding candidates and vote in favor. Both of these uh, men are uh, personal friends, and that's not why they're being nominated today. It's just a very lucky coincidence, and I am so grateful for their friendship. I'm grateful for their and I don't say this to make them feel old, decades of service to New York City, uh, and uh, it's Staten Island Day here at the City Council because both men are from Richmond County, and uh, both men, I really believe, are uh, total menches, and we are tremendously lucky that they have put themselves forward, Fred, and continuing to serve, as he has for many years in the City Planning Commission, and Alan being nominated by the mayor to serve as one of the mayoral appointees. So I am really, really grateful, and um, it's not often you get to sit in front of two well-qualified uh, nominees who are personal friends of yours, and they're people that I really admire of their service in government and everything they've accomplished over the years, and they're people that have been incredibly kind and generous and gracious to me, so I would ask all of uh, us on the Rules Committee today to uh, very uh, forcefully and gratefully vote in favor of their nominations. In addition to these two appointments, the Rules Committee will consider a resolution asking the council as a body to ratify the filing of a lawsuit against the New York City Law Department headed by Corporation Council Mr. Zachary Carter, the City Council under my authorization and alongside Council Members Lori Cumbo, Alika Ampri Samuel, and Richie Torres, seeks to preserve the power of Council Members to function as lawmakers, to act in their legislative capacities and to represent the interests of their constituents. The Corporation Council, who serves at the pleasure of the Mayor, has taken the position that Council Members do not have the right to file ambicus briefs in their capacity as elected officials. 
in support of claimants who disagree with the policies and practices of his boss, the mayor, and the mayor's administration. I, along with my fellow legislature, legislators and colleagues, vehemently disagree with the Corporation Council's contention, which seeks to usurp our powers as legislators and as representatives of our constituents. The principle of separation of powers in which the executive and legislative branches of government cannot infringe on the core functions of the other is well established as a founding principle of our nation and we believe is enshrined in the New York City Charter. The stance taken by the Corporation Council subverts our system of government and we believe it cannot stand. The case we have filed seeks to protect the independence of council members our city's legislators to speak in the public square and in our courts without restraint for the people who have been elect for the people who have elected us to serve them and speak on their behalf we will not be silenced by mayoral appointees and we will fight for our legislative independence and our first amendment rights uh, this again is to allow council members in their legislative capacity to file amicus briefs on issues that we believe pertain to their functions and duties as elected representatives. And so I ask all members of this rules committee and I'll ask it to the full body of the city council later today uh, to uh, please vote in favor of this as well to support our colleagues in this body and it could be us in the future who seek to file an amicus brief on something that pertains to our legislative oversight or local work that we do in our districts and with that I uh, turn it back uh, to the chair and again I just I'm I have total glee seeing Fred and Alan sit in front of me they are two of the best guys in New York City thank you chair Kozlowitz Before I present the candidates and provide information about the Planning Commission, I would like to emphasize the comments made by Speaker Corey Johnson, and I'm going to be repetitive a little bit because I'm going to say almost the same thing. The resolution we will vote on towards the end of this hearing ratifying the f filing of the lawsuit against New York City Law Department Corporation Council is crucial to the work of the council and all council members. We were elected to speak on behalf of our constituents and therefore insist on our absolute right to speak freely in the public square and in any state of federal court. We should not be silenced by the mayor or any mayoral appointee. It is also essential to insist on maintaining our rights as legislators under separation of powers principles. I firmly believe that. And with that, I'm going to call on our minority leader, Steve Matteo, to say his words. Thank you, Chair Koswitz. And um, yes, Speaker Johnson, welcome to Staten Island Day. Um, it's always great to have former minority leader Fred Cirillo back in chambers, for, former council member, and, and welcome Alan Capelli. Um, you know, Fred has been uh, the mayor appointee on city planning for, for, for a number of years now and uh, has just done a tremendous job representing Staten Island and the city uh, in all city planning and, and land use matters. And, um, you know, Fred makes his decisions based on thoughtfulness, intelligence, um, and uh, has just taken his role in the City Planning Commission extremely seriously. And the borough president, uh, Jimmy Otto's pick, uh, he couldn't have a better pick than, than my good friend, Fred Cirillo. Um, when it comes to issues that affect that now, and Fred's always communicating, Fred's always um, looking for the right answers, looking to make sure the Staten Island's interests are um, always forefront and, and the issues of of the rest of the city as well. So, Fred, it's it's my honor um, to welcome you back. Welcome you back to City Hall Chambers, the Minority Leaders Office, your home, uh, your former seat over there. So, um, looking forward to appointing you, Alan, uh, another Staten Island resident. Um, we've worked together very well since I was a staffer as an elected official. You certainly bring a unique experience. Uh, especially in your role um, on the MTA board. I know you're going to do a great job for Staten Island, um, for New York City, and uh, I look forward to your appointment, and I um, ask my colleagues to um, strongly vote in favor of these two fine gentlemen. 
Thank you. I'm going to call on uh, my counsel to read uh, what about the City Planning Commission. Pursuant to the New York City Charter, the City Planning Commission consists of 13 members. Seven appointments, which includes the appointment of the chair, are made by the mayor. One appointment is made by the public advocate and one by each of the borough presidents. All members accept the chair subject to the advice and consent of the council. According to the charter, the members should be chosen for their independence, integrity, and civic commitment. Planning commission members serve for staggered five-year terms except for the chair, who as director of the Department of City Planning serves at the pleasure of the mayor. Planning commission members outside of the chair are not considered regular city employees, and there's no limit on the number of terms members may serve. However, planning commission members are prohibited from holding any other city office while serving on the planning commission. The chair receives an annual salary of $214,413. The vice chair receives an annual salary of $65,121. And members receive an annual salary of $54,150. Planning Commission members have several responsibilities. Some of these duties include engaging in planning that is focused on the city's orderly growth, improvement, and future development. Assisting the mayor and other officials in developing the 10-year capital strategy, the four-year capital program, as well as the annual statement of needs. Overseeing and coordinating environmental reviews under the city environmental quality review preparing and filing a zoning and planning report with the mayor, the council, the public advocate, the borough president, and all of the community boards. Approving, reviewing, or denying any city proposal involving requests to make acquisitions for office space and requests for existing buildings for office use. The planning commission also establishes various rules, which we will not get into right now, but we can put them in the record later. I turn back to the chair. Thank you. Welcome, Mr. Capelli. I just met you today, but I know you're going to do a great job. I have heard about you, so I wish you all the best. Um, if he says you're fantastic, you're absolutely fantastic. Welcome, Mr. Capelli. Would you please raise your right hand to be sworn in? Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the testimony you're about to give? Thank you. Do you wish to make an opening statement? Please proceed. OK. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Alan Capelli. Uh, let me begin by thanking Mayor de Blasio for submitting my name to the City Council for your review. And to Speaker Corey Johnson uh, for his eloquence and his support and his friendship. Uh, Chairwoman Karen Koslowitz and the members of the Rules, Elections, and Privileges Committee for their opportunity to be considered for a position on the City Planning Commission of the City of New York. <clears throat> I understand that it is a significant position affecting the footprint of the city in all of our five boroughs. Let me also specifically acknowledge my council member and friend, Debbie Rose, and Minority Leader, Steve Matteo, a member of this committee, both who serve th this city and their communities exceptionally. Thank you for your service. I'm a native New Yorker and have been in public service for almost 40 years. 40 years, Corey. Starting my service as the land use chairman for Community Board 1, Staten Island, back with Debbie in the good old days. Uh, <laughs> during my six year tenure, I worked with local residents, community based organizations, and elected officials with a goal of having as much information available and communicating it so that neighborhoods could have their voices heard. I began my career in government working in the Manhattan Borough President's Office. I worked throughout Mario Cuomo, Governor Mario Cuomo's 12-year tenure in several positions and was appointed the Chairman of the Unemployment Insurance Appeal Board at the end of his administration. 
I served on that board until I joined the staff of former Bronx Borough President Fernando Ferrer, whom I served with for four years as one of his chief assistants until he left office in 2002. More recently, I spent eight years as a board member of the Metropolitan Transit Authority and have now served almost two years as a member of the New York City Civil Service Commission, for which I received uh, the approval of this body uh, and the full council two years ago. I went into the private practice of law where I have spent the past 16 years doing primarily criminal defense work, with a significant part of my practice devoted to indigent defendants. A consistent thread between all of my endeavors has been a commitment to social justice and reform and a desire to make government work for all of its residents of our city and our state. My tenure in government has always been defined by my independent spirit, obliged to seek ways for the government to work in a transparent way for all New Yorkers so that everybody can share in the opportunities available, particularly in education, housing, transportation, and employment. If the City Council approves my appointment, I pledge to do everything I can to fully understand the issues and to take into serious consideration the opinions and concerns of those directly affected by applications and proposals balanced against the benefits offered as a justification for approval. Again, I thank you for your consideration and I welcome your questions. Thank you and the best of luck to you. Thank you. Our next candidate, Fred Cirillo. I met Fred in 1991. He was the sole Republican on the New York City Council. <laughs> we were 35 members and he was the Republican candidate. The 34 others were Democrats. However, however, he became my friend very quickly. He was my mentor. He sat with me on all the committees because he was on all of the committees. He had all the committees that he served on, and he really helped me through the process. So, Fred, I am forever thankful, and I wish you the best of luck. Uh, Debbie Rose wants to say. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, it's, Can I interrupt them? It's a, oh. 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 To be sworn in? Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in I the testimony you're about to give? I do. Thank you. And do you wish to make an opening statement? Yes, a brief one, please. Please proceed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker Johnson, Chair Koslowitz, the Minority Leader Matteo, the members of the committee, and all of the council members who are here who are not on this committee, and a, a particular mention of my council member at home, Debbie Rose. It's a real honor for me to be here and to appear before you as part of my nomination uh, for reappointment to the City Planning Commission. I have spent at least a part of my career over the past three decades working in and around this very building where the business of our government gets done and I've worked with our city's last five mayors and five speakers and their administrations. Knowing the incredible work that they are responsible for each day in the lives of New Yorkers and the impacts that work has on our city and our region and beyond, I am certainly honored by the nomination to this panel by Borough President James Otto and his confidence in me to continue to serve our city. I am also honored and especially proud to sit before this committee one I sat on myself during my tenure as minority leader and to come before you as you consider my nomination in this confirmation process. I have immense respect for this process and the work of this council and I hope that you will find it valuable to enable me to return to the commission and to use my experiences as both a former elected and appointed official and as a lifelong New Yorker and in this particular process as a Staten Islander in deliberating the important land use matters that will come before us. So I thank you again, and I'm happy to address any questions that you may have. 
Thank you. And now we'll call on Council Member Rose. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, and to my speaker this morning, um, it is indeed Staten Island Day in the chambers. Um, and I am honored to be able to sit here and to extol the virtues of my homies from uh, Shaolin. <laughs> um, and uh, I am here to encourage my colleagues today to cast their vote for two Staten Islanders who have long-standing records of service to our city. Alan Capelli, and I, I, I have to preface my remarks with both of them are my very dear friends. And Alan referred to, I think, 40 years. I was going to say that I knew them more than 20, um, <laughs> but I actually uh, think Alan's more uh, closer to the mark. Um, and so my friend, Alan Capelli, has served with distinction on the Civil Service Commission, the MTA Board, and the Unemployment Appeals Board and he's worked with numerous labor unions and has held managerial positions as well. And his work with the MTA um, for Staten Islanders um, has been above and beyond um, what any of our expectations were, especially since we don't have a subway system. And when people think MTA, they think subways. Um, but we have transit deserts and, and bus service, and Alan Capelli made sure that we were not left out of the equation at any time. My friend, and, and, um, and he's also distinguished himself legally. I don't know if anyone knows that he is um, an attorney, and he's done yeoman work in, in the field of working with clients who are indigent, who are usually underrepresented, and um, often are voiceless in our court system. My friend Fred Cerullo um, is just, um, I, I love him. He's, we are currently working on a project N3360, which is a program that um, enhances our business district and our the strips, um, our business district in in the North Shore, and um, he ha he also has a distinguished record as the president and CEO of Grand Central Partnership. He has served on the New York City Council, and he's been the Commissioner of Consumer Affairs, Commissioner of Finance as well as the New York City, a member of the New York City Campaign Finance Board. And um, he is our cultural maven on Staten Island. There's not a cultural institution on Staten Island, a CIG, that doesn't want Fred Cerullo to not only have his name on the masthead, but to, to be the chair of the board because it means that that institution will be successful. And so, um, my friends are more than qualified to serve the city on the, um, the City Planning Commission. And I've known and worked and admired these men for many years, and both have the skill sets and proven record of commitment that uniquely qualify them to serve on the City Planning Commission with integrity. And they've always been an important part of the fabric of Staten Island. And so I urge my colleagues today to um, cast their votes in the affirmative for my friends. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> and with that, we will now um, vote on the nominations of Mr. Capelli and Mr. Cerullo. Are there any other comments? I, I have a question, Madam Chair. Okay. Uh, I have a I have a question for you both, and I think you both mentioned this in your opening statements, but I, I would love to hear just a little bit more about, uh, Fred, of course, you have served many years in the City Planning Commission, and Alan, we talked about uh, the ways you've served the city uh, on the MTA board, where I think you showed a great level of independence uh, in advocating for what you thought was right in a merit-based fashion, given that, um, Rezonings in the city and land use in the city of New York are often controversial matters. 
uh, in neighborhoods across the city. Could you both talk about the level of independence that you think it's important for each member of the planning commission to have uh, where you make interests on the merits based on those individual applications that of course take into consideration the person who appointed you and hearing them out but also decisions that are made really based just on the merits and uh, commissioners having that level of independence. I'd love to hear about how you balance a level of independence along with who appointed you to the City Planning Commission. Either one of you I, may begin. I, I get, I'll, I'll, I'll begin since I'm, I'm speaking from a, a place of currently sitting in that position. I think it's an excellent question. Mr. Speaker, um, I can say that, well, I, I would hope that those who are appointing us uh, are doing so for a variety of reasons. Obviously, a sense of expertise in an area, a knowledge. I know that uh, the charter does not identify specific characteristics of a person, a career choice or experience, but that overall people are nominated to a commission like this for reasons that um, would be broad enough and perhaps specific enough to have an understanding of general land use and quality of life and development issues, but that there's also a trust in the, uh, in the nominee by the person appointing that they uh, will approach the process as you, des you describe, which is open and thorough, someone who will do their homework, someone will who will listen both to the staff who very often presents the issues at the beginning of the process, but also to the community that is the most critical piece of, of the land use review process. Um, I, I think it's hard to say this is how it works because I certainly wouldn't want to be sitting here if I believe that all I was contributing is uh, the voice of a third party, even if it's the person appointing me, I can tell you because for the past 14 years I've been a mayoral appointee, um, I've never felt a sense of, of pressure or, or undue influence in the process of my deliberations on issues. I have found uh, the dialogue at the commission level to be very open and collegial. Those of you, you all appear before the commission at very various times, you get a sense of the collegiality of the commission and the respect between commissioners. Um, this is a new, uh, obviously I'm here today as a nominee of the Staten Island Borough President, somebody who I know for 20 plus years at this point, who I have the utmost respect for. And I hope that I'm here as his nominee because he has confidence in the process that I will go through to get to the best decision and the vote I can make. So I think a lot of it, um, I can speak from experience. I haven't felt uh, influenced by any mayor that I've had the privilege of serving in this time. I don't expect that, to, I, I expect that to continue in this new role um, as the Staten Island designee. Um, but I do believe that communication is very important. As you know, many of you have positions where you appoint people to different things, and so you, you get this from the other side. I just think as long as you uh, are approaching it openly and keeping the lines of communication open, um, I think that the process works well. Um, but I can assure you if I felt that I was here for any other reason than to contribute my own sense of contribution to the process, I wouldn't enjoy this at all. So I, I think that's the best answer that I can give. Um, I think the, the proof will be in the pudding as we move ahead. Um, but I welcome always the, the contribution of the council members and anybody who makes an appointment to the land use process because we know it doesn't work without that. What Fred said. <laughs> uh, actually, uh, I don't know the, the uh, workings of the City Planning Commission yet, but my experience in similarly situated 
uh, situations, particularly the MTA mm -hmm. demonstrates a, which I'm no longer on, uh, I've been off for two years, uh, uh, which uh, demonstrated my ability to A, get up to speed as fast as I could on the issues involved so that I couldn't be uh, fooled or uh, misled by staff uh, who sometimes have their own agenda in, in pursuing things, uh, working as close as I could with the uh, uh, communities affected by decisions we were making. I would often be at public hearings till two o'clock, four o'clock in the morning, talking to people in the back of uh, gymnasiums or public halls, uh, you, know, uh, you know, learning about the uh, importance of a crosstown bus route and uh, uh, and taking that information and going back and fighting for it uh, inside the board, winning people over to, to the position, pushing back against staff, uh, and uh, in many instances either being successful or when I ultimately couldn't live with the proposal, I would vote against something and uh, would be out in the street with uh, uh, elected officials and uh, Riders Alliance groups and strap hanger groups, uh, you know, protesting a decision that was, uh, that I believed was not in the city or the uh, community's best interest. Uh, I uh, can be pretty persuasive uh, internally. Uh, I'll take the hopefully Fred Cerullo approach of disagreeing without being disagreeable uh, in, in dealing with my new colleagues, some of which I know. Uh, and uh, hopefully I'll get up to speed very quickly. Uh, I am accessible to talk about issues in general, virtually any topic involving government, but, but now particularly in terms of general uh, uh, topics involving uh, uh, land use uh, issues in the city. And uh, 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 I will uh, try to maintain the reputation that I've had for 40 years in doing this. And I have the utmost confidence of both of you because I think you both have shown that time and again over, again, decades of uh, public service to our city. And so I'm grateful again for your testimony here today. And uh, I look forward to voting in favor of your nominations. Thank you. Well, let me just say that uh, I, I think I, uh, I, I'm supposed to make clear that I currently serve on the uh, Civil Service Commission and if the council choose to uh, sign off on my nomination and the mayor appoints me, I will be uh, resigning from that position. We have to ask Mr. Capelli one question. Mr. Capelli, just uh, for the record, you currently serve, as the speaker has just mentioned, uh, on the New York City Civil Service Commission. This is not allowed under the New York City Charter if you're a member of the Planning Commission. If your nomination is approved, will you affirm that you will resign? He, he, just, he just answered that. Yes, I will. I, I will resign uh, if I am approved. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. With that, can we call the roll call? Lee Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote. Uh, the Committee on Rules, M35 and 39. Chair Kozlowitz. I proudly vote aye. Gibson. Matteo. Aye. Chin. I also proudly vote aye. Congratulations, thank, thank you. you. Cornegie. Espinal. Congratulations, I vote aye. Lanceman. Traeger. Adams. I congratulate and thank both of you so much for your service. I proudly vote aye. Thank you. Speaker Johnson. I vote aye and for the record, uh, for the press and for uh, the public record and for Chuck Davis, uh, I will vote aye and I will say that it is not, I believe, considered a conflict of interest for me to vote in favor of my good friend Alan Capelli. He gave him my first full-time job as a <laughs> resident of New York City at the age of uh, uh, 20 years old at the salary of less than $25,000 uh, for full-time employment in 2002. That is not a conflict almost 20 years later, and I vote <laughs> aye in favor of Alan Capelli and Fred Cerullo. <laughs>
By a vote of eight in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, both M35 and 39 are adopted by the committee. Thank you. Thank you so much. Don't leave. We have to I'll vote on the pre-considered resolution Thank before you. the committee. Thank you so much. Be on rules roll call, pre considered resolution. Council Member Kozlowitz. I vote aye. Matteo. Aye. Chin. Aye. Espinada. Aye. Lanceman. Traeger. Aye. Adams. Aye. Speaker Johnson. I vote aye. By a vote of seven in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, pre-considered resolution is adopted by the committee. We're going to hold the vote open for 10 minutes. 